Hello, YouTube. I YouTube. am the great and powerful Mr. E. I am your uh, cryptid orator, Jay. Ooh. And Thank together, we're Coach Corn Podcast. Thank you for joining us on YouTube for this YouTube exclusive. We're going to keep this trend going because it's been working so good. It's uh, fun. And I have a lot of books. So uh, That's an understatement. So what book are we using this week for our story for YouTube? Well, I'll give you a quick shot of the... 20, well, read this title. And 20 everything. Chilling Tales from the Wilderness, Fearsome Creatures of the Lumberwoods by Hal Johnson, illustrated by Tom Mead. Pretty fun book. So again, this is, this is what it looks like if you're in the market looking for it. If you like our little story today. Yeah, so it's kind of like a more storified version. I don't know. It, it's good. We'll just go into it. So which one are we doing? So we're going to read the uh, excerpt about the Gumberoo. Which is like a bear with 85 arms. Um, maybe bear. I mean, we'll get into the it. The head looks like a bear from that yeah, artist's it does. depiction. Yeah. But it's like a, the picture looks like a big Ooh, thing of skull. flesh. Yeah, look at the skull. Is that a bear skull? Yeah, I would say. Mm. Pretty close to one, at least. Bear, it almost looks like a bear cat. Oh, bear cat. We got them around here. We do. We do. Yes. What was a bear cat? I don't know. Was that a real animal? I don't think so. I think when we call bear cat, I think that they're talking like badgers and wolverines. Okay, that makes more sense. Because it's like they just look like that. Yeah, it's like that kind of looks like a cat, but it also kind of looks like a bear, and it's really nasty. And we're referencing a school around this has that bear cat as a mascot, and like Cincinnati, Ohio, the Cincinnati bear cats. Don't know what it is, but it sounds cool. So, um, all right, let's get into the gumbaroo. You ready? Yep, the gumbaroo. Unique among all animals, the gumbaroo possesses thirteen limbs. The gumbaroo's forelimbs are long and gorilla-like, while its three hind legs are squat. Its remaining eight limbs radiate from around its abdomen, like the spokes of a wheel, permitting the fearsome creature to roll itself through the rainforest of Washington State and south to Oregon at speeds almost faster than the eye can see. So it's rolling on these limbs. It's a wheel. Basically, they're using their arms as a wheel. It's a big, fleshy wheel. Now... This is weird because uh, I read this story. This is completely off topic already about like ancient man, like a long time ago, long, long, long time ago. Like, um, you know how nowadays you're always seeking that like companion or partner. The soulmate thing. It was yes. we had two heads, four arms. Yeah, four and, four you know, and, just, yeah. and you know how they said we, or it was written down how we would travel in the the top speeds is by rolling on all the arms and legs. You would roll on your side and you just spin like a wheel. So I just thought that was interesting. So the gumbaroo was an unfit human. Maybe uh, the remnants of it, or maybe like a lost. Uh, but he only has one head. Artifact. Yeah, true. But you know how these biology things work. You know everything finds its niche. So that niche has been filled by the gumbaroo. That'd be a good uh, story. Yeah, we figured this out already. So such a trip inevitably inevitably makes the creature dizzy, and so it never travels far in this fashion. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> I love lump. So here's my thing, Andrew. I love lumberjack myths. Yeah. Because they are always the goofiest things. They always have so much weird, like hodgepodge of legends and lore in them. Reasonings for things. They're so goofy. Continue. The Gumbaroo's rubbery skin is remarkable for its resiliency. Nothing seems to penetrate it. Clubs and axes rebound harmlessly with a rubber boinging sound. And bullets fired at the Gumbaroo inevitably sink in before bouncing back. Oh, kind of, there's like a movie that's like that. I can't remember where it is. Um, directly at the rifle that fired it. In at least four cases, in 1816, twice in 1897, and in September of 1903, the bullet has re-entered the very rifle barrel it came from. But usually, the return is slightly off. The would-be hunter finds himself shot quite rudely with his own bullet. That is rude. Yeah, quite rudely. Must have learned not to shoot at the Gumbaroo. Or most have learned not to shoot at the Gumbaroo. Which I wouldn't either if it's firing right back in your gun. Oh, I would shoot at it. That'd be one heck of a return. Just keep shooting. Just keep shooting, yeah, as you're, li as you're littered with bullets. All right. Although in the glo gloaming, the Gumbaroo, although in the gloaming, the Gumbaroo can easily be mistaken for a bear... Wearing a belt of legs. Wearing a belt of legs. 
you know, I do see that a lot. I see bears wearing belts of legs kind of constantly up in the UP and stuff. Oh, yeah, I bet. What the hell does that mean? It means exactly. You could easily be mistaken for a bear wearing a belt of legs. I don't know what legs. Whose legs? <laughs> it's just... Bear legs? It could be legs? easily mistaken for a bear wearing a belt of legs. That is true. It does happen. It just is like, okay, I guess. Oh. This next line. Oh, I'm going to reread the whole line okay, and then ahead. continue on because... Okay, the gumbaroo can be easily mistaken for a bear wearing a belt of legs, a not uncommon sight in the Pacific Northwest, Northwest, which explains the error. What? Yeah, I don't know. All right, I know we don't have a lot of people on the page or on the podcast yet, uh, on the YouTube side of the podcast that is, but we I know we have a lot of Pacific Northwest listeners on the main show. Yeah, have you ever seen a bear wearing a belt of legs? Because apparently it's fairly common out there. Yeah, leave a comment down below. We'll have a discussion. What the hell is this thing? I, a gumbaroo. I don't know. Gumbaroo. Let's find out more. This, the fearsome creature spends most of its life hibernating, often wedged into narrow crevice or uncomfortable hole. Its pliant skin and cartilaginous... Can I say that word? Yeah, that is cartilaginous. Bones permit it to deform its body into unusual and amusing shapes, like a, like a contortionist. Mm. When it wakes... It is inevitably ravenously hungry. It becomes one of the most dangerous force in the temperate. It becomes one of the most dangerous forces in the temperate rainforests, swinging through the trees and eating every animal it sees, bones and all. That's from the Sandlot. That line, mm. bones and all. It can eat an entire bull moose in about four hours. That's fast. An average size Sunday school picnic. Picnickers included would take it scarcely too. <laughs> wow, <laughs> its body distends after the repa- repast. Uh, oh, after it eats, like a Frenchman's, to fit more food and ever <laughs> it wants and ever it wants more. Okay, I guess the French eat. I guess they do eat a lot. Um, a meal in France, like they serve serve you full course meals, and or is that Italy? That's Italy. That's yeah, John Panette. and they just keep giving you bread. Remember, John Panette said his, his skinny friend died when they went to Italy. Yeah, because he kept feeding them. Well, because he he made John Panette made the joke that like he only knew like a couple things in Italian. Yeah, and the main phrase he knew is "Feed me, I'm hungry." Yeah, and they no, and trust like, they will. And they're like, "Oh, baby boy, t- 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 tell what's his name that what you just said." I do a buy him. Yeah. And he's like, oh, we feed you. More bread. Oh, we feed you. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, do we get a menu to order? And he's like, no, no, no. First we bring you out some food, and then we'll bring you a menu. Yeah. And he's like, wow, well, this is the best place. And then it's like, Timmy to hide. <laughs> he just kept shoving pasta into his mouth. And I'm like, he's dead. Pass it over here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, he's funny. Okay. The rubbery skin of the gumbaroo has no pores, and so the creature cannot sweat. Consequently, it is in perpetual risk of overheating, a risk only exacerbated by the flammability of its flesh. Exposed to open flame, the gumbaroo burns brightly for only a few seconds before being reduced to a being reduced to memories and ash. That's pretty good. After a forest fire, rangers report a distinctive stench throughout the burnt over regions, the stench of hundreds of hibernating gumbaroo gone to glory. It smells like a tire fire, which stinks. Of the innumerable attempts to take a gumbaroo alive, the most celebrated was that of Gavrilo Princip, who spent 10 months in 1913 and early 1914 hunting gumbaroo. Princess tried everything to trap the gumbaroo. He dug pits, as well as deer reader, as well as deer reader? Wait, he dug pits... As we all, dear reader, have dug so many pits to capture fearsome creatures, but the gumbaroo, upon falling in, simply bounced back out every time. He tried dropping cages and nets on the gumbaroo, only to find its rubbery form easily slip through the narrow bars. In the tiny mesh, he sought the beast in winter, hoping that the cold would hinder its springy nature, so it could be knocked senseless by a club to the head. Unfortunately, the cold, the gumbaroo 
In the cold, the gumbaroo grows brittle, and Princep can only shatter, only shattered its prey. Now I'm gonna pause right there. Thought it just said earlier they hibernate in the winter. So how is he finding these things? You're you're questioning something that doesn't need to be questioned. Mm. I think there's some is there's some plot holes in this. Like every conspiracy folklore. you believe in. What do you mean? What do you mean? There's never plot holes. That's the problem with. That's the problem. That's why things are considered oh, conspiracies is because you fill in the actual you know plot holes in the actual narrative, and they're like, no, nope, that can't be, that can't be conspiracy. I'm pointing them out. This is the main narrative I'm giving you. So hmm, something doesn't add up here. I wonder if this is real. I guess we'll get here at the end. <laughs> I wonder if the thirteen limbed jelly bear. Is real or not? That ain't that weird compared to other things. Look at the look at the velvet worm, for example. Yeah, it's an invertebrate. Weird. Yeah. Look at the short faced bear. Gone. Weird. All right. Um. All the time he hunted, Gone. Prince Ep was in deadly danger. And should we mention that? Or I guess it'll come around who Prince Ep was. Yeah. Yeah. He's nobody of consequence. Should we mention it now? No, just keep going. He's nobody of consequence. Yeah. Not till later. This was 1913 when he was doing this. So, yeah. A few years later, he becomes prominent. Yeah, not really. Doesn't matter. Princip was in debt. Wait, all the time he hunted, Princip was in deadly danger, for the Gumbaroo possesses, possesses three met methods of locomotion. Strolling along the ground, swinging through the trees, and rolling like a wheel. An escape from... A creature with three methods of locomotion is all but impossible. We have already mentioned the voracious appetite of the Gumbaroo. I am not afraid, Princip told reporters. At last, Princess, Princess, Princip enlisted the aid of a mysterious species from Pennsylvania with the unfortunate name of Timberdoodle. Other Pennsylvanian animals include, oh gosh, this is your realm, Archaeothyrus? That sound familiar? And the carb carbono peton. Okay, let me see. I don't know. Right here. Archaeothyrus is probably right. And then Carbireptrian. Carbireptrian is probably that. Okay. Oh well, yeah, shoot, I don't know. Or paleontology, because those look like paleontolog paleontological words. Gotcha. You just kinda kinda say them really fast. Yeah. So normally like how I learned how to say is like normally most biological names of ancient species are like three or four words smashed together. Yeah. So you say it. So fast. you just isolate those three words. Gotcha. You don't try to read it as one thing. Gotcha. Like okay. Ar like Archiraptorus and stuff like that is Archi Raptor Rus. Mm. It's not like you can't just can't read it as one thing because there's too many syllables. Right, gotcha. That makes more sense. The timber doodle is a small carnival unique in that once it bites down its jaws will not open again until it hears the sound of thunder. During dry spells, the creature may well starve. Prince yeah. knew that in the rainforest of Washington, the timberdoodle would have no such troubles and brought it thence in a sack. Prince then set to work tracking the gumbaroo, the easiest part of his job, for a few creatures in the wild lay tracks like unicycles. Touche. Fair enough. Prince fair, fair. Of, right, yeah. So he knew what he was doing a little bit. Prin Indeed, Princip soon found a gumbaroo still slightly dizzy from its travels. And he's... Ooh, I don't know that word. He's Oh, sick. Oh, two words. Sick the timber doodle on it. If most creatures were to bite the gumbaroo, their jaws would bounce right back open. But of course, the timber doodle's jaws could not reopen in the absence of thunder. So it kept its grip on the rubbery flesh of the gumbaroo. Smart. Using nature against nature. Mm -hmm. The startled Gumbaroo took to the trees in a panic, rapidly swinging away through the low branches, leaving a long, distended, rubbery trail of stenched skin behind it. The rubbery tail grew longer and longer as the timber doodle, by this point, Gavrillo Princip, had staked oh, down the biter with croquet wickets. So it could not let it go, and the Gumbaroo would not stop fleeing. Migrating deer passing south were caught in the stretching band, which bounced and flung them back, confused <laughs> and cold, to the freezing north of British Columbia. 
And there's a little picture here of the timber doodle bite in the things. Probably a rump area. Let's see here. By this point, Princip, an excitable man, thought his game was all but caught. But unfortunately, the sound of deer being catapulted backwards so resembled the thunder that the timber doodle opened its jaws. Oh. Uh, so you can't open their jaws without thunder. You just need something that sounds similar. He needs to, he needs to think it's thunder. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see here. Predictably, like a stone in a slingshot, the gumbaru was launched forward, and it flew through the air out of sight. <laughs> but mid-flight, it struck a mountainside, probably Glacier Peak, and rebounded backwards, eventually landing and rolling gently right toward an ecstatic princess. So it bounced right back to him. Here was the deadly scour... Oh my gosh. Scourage? Scourage? Oh, I don't know why I can't read that. Of the Northwest. Unstoppable and hitherto... Scourge. Scourge, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They even put this weird font in there. Yeah, to screw with you. Of the Northwest, unstoppable and hitherto uncatchable, stunned from its unprecedented journey. <laughs> so Prince He's trying to hit with a mountain. Yeah, that's all. Simple. Simple. Prince of said, Simple. Nothing left to do but roll it to civilization. Smiling smugly to himself moments before an ash from his cigarello fell on the stunned Gumbaru. Oh no. The fearsome creature ignited, and an instant later, there was nothing left of Princip's dreams but a fine spray of ash smudging his face. Oh, that sucks. So he had it. Mm -hmm. This is why he went to go hunt bigger game. That's true. Ooh. Ooh. Bigger game like royalty. Interesting. Broken hearted, with only a timber doodle in, in his sack, he returned to civilization, or at least Olympia, Washington. Once Princip reached the city, he began to sicken and weaken. He was short of breath and had a hard time keeping food down. Doctors diagnosed him with tuberculosis. Mm. But they diagnosed everyone with tuberculosis in those, in those days. Modern medicine was in its infancy. How were doctors to know that the incinerated gumbaru had coated 65% of Princip's internal organs with a rubbery film that hindered respiration? and almost entirely prevented digestion. Food just bounced off his stomach and out of his mouth again. It was disgusting, and it was also killing him. Man. Is this why he... So everybody at home, look him up, because he, he, he's very easy to search for reasons. Yeah, you'll find out in this next paragraph. But he looks like a dead man. Yes. Like every picture, every picture of him. I wish I knew how to edit videos, because I'd put it on here. Like, right, we can add... Yeah, that'd be cool. I'll figure out if I can... Probably not, because I'm not that good, but... You need a computer. I think I could do that. Yeah. You've been saying it for three months. I don't know. I just don't have one. I got internet now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Continue. One step. One Tell step. us about Fritz. So, as his body consumed itself, and he realized he did not have long to live, Princip abandoned his hunt for the Gumbaru and vowed to bag the biggest game of all. He vowed, in the little time he had left, to hunt down Archduke Ferdinand. Got sneezed. And he did. He did. He did. Uh, he pledged the world into two world wars. Hmm. All because... Of the Gumbaru. The Gumbaru. Who would have known? That's a lot to put on one animal. Yeah, but here it is. In print, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Such an audacious and romantic hunt captured the imagination of the people of Olympia. And they all gathered around the train station as he began his journey to Europe to wish... Prince of good hunting? Are you kidding me? His eyes were sunk in his face. He looked really dead. And he looked like a dead man already. But such are the dooms and dangers of hunting Gumbaru. And <laughs> so the record remains. No one has ever captured a Gumbaru alive, although Prince of did catch his other prey in the end. Which is talking about Archduke. He shot Archduke for Dan. So many stories of the lumber woods are terrifying and sad that it's heartwarming to re report that a man achieved his dream. I don't know. Was the Archduke... I don't know a lot about the Archduke Ferdinand. I don't know Was he either. a bad man? I don't really don't know for sure. Because it was like, okay, imagine World War II. Like, if some guy in the Pacific Northwest was like, okay, I'm going to go kill, kill Hitler, and he did? Yeah. Yeah, they'd celebrate him. I would imagine it's not on that scale, because I feel like we'd know more. I don't know. World War One kind of gets, for us, gets overshadowed by World War Two. For sure. Let's Let's... Do a little quick search of Archduke. It's Archduke Ferdinand, a bad man. He had a cool mustache. Uh, yeah, most horrible people did. Oh, you're right. Think about every horrible person 
They almost always had a cool mustache. Yeah, Freddie Mercury sucked. I'm just kidding. I like him. I just thought of his mustache. Stalin. Did he have a cool mustache? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Ferdinand had the big, cool, like... Hitler. Mustache, yeah. He had a... You know why he had a mustache. Yeah, because gas masks, right? Yeah. Um, Let's see here. You know, there used to be a lot of Hitlers in Hardin County, Ohio. Like their last name? Mm Mm-hmm. Did not know that. My grandma Audrey was telling the story that, like, there was, like... A lot. There used to be a lot, and then like 1940 or 1939. So she would have been my great grandma. So she, you know, but she was telling stories that like, yeah, there was no Hitlers after 1939. When they changed her name, yeah, oh, okay. that's where like uh, Gudekunst came from. Really, and I'm a Gudekunst. You are. Mm-hmm. So you were a Hitler, or maybe. Uh, but Gudekunst was a very common German name. Yeah, Gudekunst. Yeah, so it was. Uh, that was kind of one that a lot of the Hitlers picked because there was already a lot of German immigrants here with the last name. Yeah. So it was easier to blend in because they knew you were German, but if you're, you know, a good Kuhn's is a little bit different. Um, yeah, I mean, June 28th, 1914, Franz Ferdinand and his wife were assassinated in Sarajevo by the 19-year-old Gallo Gavrilo Princess. He was 19. Yeah, he was. So when he was hunting the Gumbaru. Gumbaru was like 17. 1718. Well, this is 1913. That's said 1913. So he was what, same 18. No, comp- yeah, like that's crazy. So he's got this young. Oh, it's Archduke Ferdinand a bad man? I don't know. Um, I don't. I mean, I, was I Hitler a bad man? Hurwitz. Yes. Political views. Uh, Eat babies. Oh, okay, so it just says historians have disagreed on how to characterize the political philosophies of Franz Ferdinand. I'd say no matter what we get, we're not going to get a straight answer because I'm All sure right. it'll be biased either way. But for some reason, with the people of the Pacific Northwest, we're very excited about. Yeah. yeah, what's the connection there? I don't know. I'm probably immigrants. At that time, 1913, the Pacific Northwest was pretty much all immigrants because mm-hmm. that was the land that nobody that was already settled wanted yet. Interesting. We sent them out to deal with all the hardships first. Yeah, all the rock apes and... Uh, whatever, in the gumbaroos up there. We didn't want to deal with them. Yeah. They're like, okay, gumbaroos are flammable. Thank you for that information. That's crucial. Yeah. So, see, these forest fires are good. I just think about it. Why? Gumbaroos are natural. Yeah, but it's good to get rid of some of them sometimes. No. I think so. No. You don't need them, like, waking up from a slumber. and. Do you think the gumbaroo is real? N- no. Neither do I. Yeah, I'm going to say no. 99% of lumberjack legends are because lumberjacks got drunk after work and all that. But I wonder the inspiration where that came from. Do you think they found like tracks that were like a wheel? No, I don't know. There's always some. Sometimes there's some truth. Like the Squonk's a famous another Lumberland uh, legend, and that's because of uh, these beam beetles like foaming up when they reproduce. Mm-hmm. So they create this big puddle that looks like uh, looks like spit and stuff like that. So like, Squonk tears. yeah, like okay, well, what's that? And then they created a whole creature they'd never seen off of one thing. Oh my gosh. What if someone's okay, here's a question. What if someone does witness a squonk one day? Squonk. It's even on camera. That's called a pig with manes. But but say it even on video and it turns into tears. That's called a pig that somebody got hit or got hit with a meteorite. Uh, but and so you've seen it. Would that then be a tulpa or would they exist? I don't want to use that I don't want to hear that word ever again. I'm just saying, how would you classify it? CGI. Because you don't ever believe anything that's videoed. No, I don't. So why would I? Well, that's true. It'd still be a tulpa. Oh, uh, it'd be fake. Fake tulpa. It's basically a tulpa at this point, right? Even if it's real or not. It's a creation of the mind, right? A lumberjack mind. No response. Mind is blown. No. I'm tired of that word. You can't even wrap your mind around the complexities. I'm going to go punch my neighbor over this. The entomologist? No, the one across the street. Oh, okay. He's parking in my driveway. <laughs> no. I don't know. So, no, a gumbaroo, I don't think it's real. I think maybe they found, like, maybe a bear fight, uh, leaving a lot of, like, bear tracks in, like, one area. So that can look really confusing. Mm. Maybe something like that would be the, yeah. the truth source. I wonder where it came from. Or, yeah, where the, the thought came from. I don't know. There's one we're gonna do eventually. It's basically a, a giant alligator that has a hula hoop ring on its back. Yeah. And you have to get the hoop on it. You gotta get the hoop on it, or it'll eat you. 
So you gotta you gotta throw a, a hula hoop on its back. Yeah, or it'll eat you. Like that game at the fair where you throw the exactly. ring toss. Oh, Except gosh. it's attached to an alligator armadillo that's a hundred feet long. That's moving. Oh gosh. Oh, there's Gumbaroo beer. All right, I have been the great and powerful Mister E. And I have been your what I say the uh, I have no idea something order your cryptid order J. And you've been listening to Crimson Corn YouTube. Hope you have a great day, guys. Merry Christmas, and bye. bye.